G'day, I'm Paul. It's time for another car expert, Drag Parison. I never thought I'd be doing these with dual cab utes, but this is where we are today. This is the all-new Ford Ranger, and today we're going to be drag racing the V6 against the four-cylinder. We have the XLT over here. It's the V6 and the Wild Track, which is the four-cylinder version. They're both about the $70,000 mark plus on-road costs. So today we're going to chat engine and drivetrain specs. We're going to do a sound comparison. Then I'm going to do acceleration tests in a number of different modes to see which is quickest. And finally, we're going to cap things off with a drag race in the wet. Uh, now, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon, especially because we're gonna be doing more content with the Ford Ranger. So if you do wanna keep up to date, you can subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified every time we do this. And if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this drag comparison, you can use the time codes on the screen there as well. But let's get started. Now, before we start doing all the fun stuff, let's run over the engines quickly. Now, this one here, the Wild Track, is fitted with the four cylinder. You can get this with a V6, but it's pretty familiar. So two liter turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine, 154 kilowatts of power, 500 Newton meters of torque. Now this has changed ever so slightly compared to the previous generation of this. It's got new injectors, new torque converter, and also a new transmission calibration as well. Still retains the 10 speed auto, nothing too special there. It runs in two wheel drive high range most of the time, but you can then switch it into four wheel drive high range when you are driving on unsealed surfaces. And if you have look under here there is so much space in there so you can clearly see why they've left enough room for a turbocharged v6 and maybe a v8 one day as well let's jump over to the xlt now this is fitted with ford's new three liter turbocharged v6 diesel engine now this meaty unit produces 184 kilowatts of power and 600 newton meters of torque which is a nice healthy little dollop there it's also mated to the 10 speed automatic this is called the lion engine this was previously used in some land rover and range rover products and most recently it was used by the f-150 in the united states now let's talk about weights because there is a slight weight difference between these. This engine is about 30 kilograms heavier than the four cylinder, but because the XLT has less equipment, it's only about 10 kilograms difference between these two cars, which should make it pretty evenly matched. The other big difference here as well is that the V6 equipped Rangers can run in two wheel drive, four automatic, and also four high range plus low range as well. So you have a wider breadth of drivetrain options there to choose from. One other thing I'll point out as well is that the Wild Track is running all terrains, and this is running all terrains as well, but they are a different brand of tyre. So it might make a little bit of difference, but they are close enough. Okay, time for our sound test. This will be interesting. So Wild Track first, this is the four cylinder. Scott, fire it up, give it a rev. Sounds very much like a diesel 4x4 ute. Uh, let's go over to the V6 and see what that sounds like. Okay, V6 time. Now, given this is a Range Rover engine, hopefully this has a little burble to it. Fire it up, Scott. Sounds nice and premium. There you go, wasn't expecting that. Okay, so let's kick off with acceleration tests. Um, and we're gonna start with the Wild Track 2 liter. Unfortunately, it is, you know, Murphy's all wet today, but um, I think that'll make this more fun anyway. So I'm gonna go through a number of tests in each of these variants until we get our numbers. Then I'm gonna do a drag race. So uh, like I said, starting off with Wild Track 2 liter, I'm gonna go with two wheel drive traction control on to begin with. So there is no sport mode. There's nothing I really need to change here. So it's in drive. I'm gonna stall it up a bit and just uh, get on the throttle. Hopefully we have traction and we'll see how we go. So here we go for our first zero to 100 run. All right, we are getting there. Feels kind of ridiculous doing <laughs> zero to 100 runs in a ute, but anyway. Um, okay, so there it is, 100 k's now. We'll come to a stop. Okay, so logged a time of 10 seconds flat. Keep in mind, it is a little bit wet today and traction control was on there. So 10 seconds flat. Let's go back and give this a shot with traction control off. Okay, it is time for the second run. This time around, I'm gonna switch traction control off. And what I'll do is actually just switch stability control off entirely. So you just push and hold this button. It comes up with a little countdown timer there and then eventually it switches off, so it says ESC off. I'm gonna keep it in two-wheel drive, we'll stall it up a bit, and we will see how it goes. There we go. I love how you can feel it back lifting a little bit. 
still no wheel stop, that was good, off the line there, flat to the board, here we go, alright, let's have a look at our time there, 9.8 seconds, so a little bit of an improvement when you switch stability control off, which is encouraging to see. Uh, it's still not blisteringly fast, and it also shows the speedos out slightly. I was seeing 100 k's an hour here on the speedo, but it was still a little while off uh, matching it on the V-Box, which is uh, GPS tracking. So um, yeah, it shows that the speedo is just a tiny bit out. Righto, next run. This time what I'm gonna do is put this into four-wheel drive high range. So one push of that button. I'll leave stability control on for this run. Uh, four-wheel drive is on. Now keep in mind, you shouldn't use four-wheel drive high range on sealed surfaces, but because we are just going in a straight line, it's not gonna put all that much stress on the drive line. And if you wanna understand why, click up here to watch a video we shot explaining four-wheel drive controls. So let's give this a shot. So I'm gonna stall it up again and um, we'll see how it goes. Higher stall so we can get out of the gates. That ah, felt good. Here we go. All right. All right, there we go. 100 k's an hour. I think it was marginally quicker 9.7 seconds to 100 k's an hour. I'm actually really surprised how much traction this has off the line. Uh, despite the fact that it's wet at the moment, it is hooking up nicely. Uh, this car has Ford's uh, all-terrain tyre, which is an option on other uh, parts of the Ranger range, but it does seem to have a decent amount of traction built into it. Righto, so we're in the V6 Ranger. First time this has been fitted with a V6 diesel. So uh, I'm excited to see how this goes. Uh, this has a number of different drive modes. So you have two high, Four auto, four high, and four low. So today we're gonna to do uh, testing in two high and four auto to see how that goes. Uh, obviously this has a whole lot more torque, so sending that all to the rear wheels, especially in the wet, is going to be interesting. So let's give it a shot. We're in two high, I've left traction control on for our first run. Here we go, I'll load it up a little bit and we'll just see how we run. It. Nice and clean off the line, here we go. felt good so it doesn't sort of you know bash you in the face in terms of the acceleration but it does feel sort of fast enough so 8.6 seconds uh, for rear wheel drive traction control on uh, not too bad okay so next up we're gonna switch off stability control I think it's worth pointing out as well so uh, same process by the way to switch it off you push and hold this Get that screen come up there. Um, it is worth mentioning that this car is on all-terrain tyres as well. They are a different brand uh, to the Wild Track, though. So I think that's going to affect how this performs. Uh, but I'm going to stall it up again here in too high, and <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. All right, here we go. Get a wheel slip there. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. And there's a hundred just there. Okay, so marginally quicker there at 8.5 seconds, zero to 100. So still quicker, uh, nothing sort of breathtaking, but it gives you an idea of the difference between the two. Um, the other thing worth noting as well is that when it is in two wheel drive mode, you can, um, you can be a little bit <laughs> cheeky as well. Yeah, one thing just while I was sort of toying around there, this will pretty much spin its wheels to 100 k's an hour. Well, 100 k's an hour indicated, which is, watch this. <laughs> 97 k's an hour indicated. <laughs> it's your cab ute. That is bloody stupid. Okay, enough mucking around now. I'm gonna put this into 4A which is the four-wheel drive automatic setting. So you do that by flicking this over to 4A. I'm gonna leave traction control on for this first run just to see how it goes. I'm gonna stall it up quite high as well just to see if we can get that sort of initial jolt off the line. Now just here as well, you can see our torque distribution. So as I accelerate, you'll be able to see how much torque it's sending to the front and rear axle as we go. So let's give this a crack, here we go. 
good. No slip off the line there. So yeah, we're getting full torque front and rear. 100 k's an hour. That's interesting. It's only marginally quicker than two-wheel drive, so it's just come in at 8.4 seconds. So our number for two-wheel drive was 8.5 seconds traction off. So uh, it does show you that they've kind of capped the torque of this engine right at the limit there of where you want it to be before you start totally losing traction. So uh, I wonder if you wound this up a little bit, how much more you could get out of it. But I think we've got one more run left in us with traction off this time. Okay, final run. We're still in full auto. This time, though, I'm going to switch uh, stability control off just to see if there's any benefit in doing that. So long push and hold. That is now off. All right, let's give this a shot. I'm going to stall it up and just stomp on it. Here we go. Felt nice off the line. There's a hundred. Ah, oh, that was better. There you go. 8.2 seconds, zero to 100 with traction control off. It's actually not a bad figure there. Almost cracked the the seven second barrier. So now let me know. I, I'm going to ask this later on as well. Do you want us to drag race the V6 Ranger against the current V6 Amarok? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, it is time for our drag race. Uh, we're doing this over an eighth of a mile. Uh, reason being, it is so damn wet today, we don't have enough room to do a quarter mile here. So an eighth of the mile is going to have to do, but I did get some quarter mile numbers and they will be on your screen at the end. So I'm gonna kill stop start. This in four uh, auto with traction off was our fastest setting. Uh, Scott, my colleague, is going to be in four high as well, which was the fastest setting over there. And then we're going to see who wins. I think this will definitely win, but I just wanted to show you how much quicker it is over that distance, just so you can visualise it in your mind. Scott, you ready to roll? Let's do it. Okay, uh, Igor, if you can count us in, we will be all good to go. Three, two, one, go. All right. That seems fair to me. All right, let's go. It's actually pulling away nicely as the rain starts to drop. 200 meter mark. All right, we'll come to a stop. Let's see what our numbers are. So uh, it took me 10.4 seconds to cross 201 meters, and that was at 113 kilometers. Now, 201 meters is an eighth mile. Uh, Scott, how did you go there over the eighth mile? 11.4 seconds at 105 kilometers an hour. Okay, so this was quicker. Let's have a look at our 0 to 100 time. Ah, oh, there you go. So 0 to 100 in 8.3, which if I have a look at my paper here, uh, which is almost as quick as the fastest run that we had, uh, which is pretty impressive, I reckon. Um, Scott, what was your 0 to 100? 10.4 seconds. Oh, that was slow. Yeah, I got 9.6 kilometers before. waiting for the excuses now. Um, uh -huh. I blame Eagle's slow countdown. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, to make you feel a little bit better, should we do that again? Go faster. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, second attempt at drag race. Uh, Scott's ears aren't working and uh, he didn't quite get that sorted. So this time around, we're going to give this another shot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll reset the V box. Uh, we've still got this in four auto, traction off. He's in the same mode. We'll see if he can do it properly this time. Um, okay, Scott, are you ready? Let's do it. Um, and Igor, we're ready for our countdown when you are. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that was closer. Here we go. Okay, I'm not pulling away as much. It is still getting away though as the distance increases. That's our 200 metres. Whoops, as we lose. <laughs> Walkie talkie. All right, we come to a stop this. <laughs> These tyres are terrible in the wet. Um, okay, so we did 10.3 seconds over the eighth mile at 112.9 kilometres an hour, which is pretty much the exact same. Okay, Scott, how did you go that time? 11 seconds at 106.5 k's an hour for the eighth mile. Okay, and your zero to 100? A blisteringly quick 9.8 seconds. My chest is actually sore from the G-forces. 
<laughs> okay, cool, thank you. Um, and I did zero to 100 in 8.3 seconds. So again, pretty much the same run as last time. Um, yeah, so look, the, the numbers are interesting because yes, this is obviously quicker, but uh, is it sort of a few thousand dollars quicker? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Okay, actually, one last thing we want to do, because I know you're thinking about this. I, I can sort of picture you all asking the question. But Scott has a closed over tray in the wild track. So what happens if we open my tray and do the run down the eighth mile with the tray open? Is there less air resistance? Is this quicker? Let's see. I'm going to reset the V-Box there. Let's see if Scott's ready. You ready to go, Scott? Let's do it. Okay, let's uh, see what happens. Uh, Igor, we're ready for our countdown. Three, two, one, go! I got the jump. <laughs> I have muffed that up. I absolutely got the jump there. That is okay. There's our 200 meter marker. Sorry, I think I got the jump then. <laughs> I know that you've got DRS open, but that does not mean you get to jump the start. <laughs> okay, let's go back and do that again. Um, yes, for the record, that was also yeah, 10 point... Slow motion, just how much you jumped that by, that was a big jump. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was 10.3 again, so... Uh, I have a strategy here just to tweak the stall just slightly and then with our wind resistance advantage we should be able to get off the line quicker so let's give this a shot. I do feel bad for our video guys, uh, Sean and Igor, it is bucketing down out there and they are very wet but committed. <laughs> Okay, second time around. Uh, this time I won't get a jump on Scott, so he doesn't complain. But I've left the tray open again, just to see how that goes. Just line those up, reset my V-Box. We'll let Igor know we're ready. Igor, ready for our countdown. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, that's better, that's better. All right, let's go, let's go. I can already feel the aero advantage here absolutely demolishing the competition and there's the 200 marker i'll bring this to a stop okay so uh there goes the theory um well actually hold on i'm confused now because we did 10.4 seconds which is technically slower but the speed was faster at 113.1 so uh the aero advantage kind of didn't really help us there in the long run, which is a little bit disappointing. Let's see how Scott went. Actually, I'll have a look at our 0 to 100 as well while we're here. No, 0 to 100 came in at 8.3 as well, so no material advantage there. Scott, what were your numbers? 0 to 100 was 9.6 seconds, and my eighth mile time was 10.9 seconds at 106.7 k's an hour. So was that your fastest? They are my fastest so far. See, so you're like a, a wine. You're getting better with time. So I didn't think it would be that much fun drag racing a set of utes, but I thought it was going to be a little bit quicker in the V6 Ranger than the four cylinder. I thought there'd be a much bigger gap. And I guess it shows you that they have capped this a little bit just to preserve engine life and all that kind of thing. Ultimately, if you are towing, uh, I think you really want to go down the path of the V6 because it's going to give you that upper limit. It'll give you a bit more oomph when you're overtaking and stuff. But if you do need to settle on the four cylinder, it's actually pretty impressive as it is. Now, I asked inside the car, do you want to see a drag race against this and the current gen V6 Amarok? The reason I think that'd be interesting is because the next generation Amarok is going to share a platform with this and given that's going to have a V6 diesel as well we kind of want to make sure that this is quicker now than the current generation Amarok V6 you don't want it to go backwards so let me know in the comments section below if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon but until next time take it easy